Okay. Just finished the latest Star Trek Discovery episode. Scavengers, I think. Um. Yeah, scavengers. Let's see. This time they're in. Well, let's see. Uh, Discovery is ordered to stay out and stick around on standby because they're the only ship in the fleet that can do what it does. You know, the, their, 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 their instant response thing. And they might have to leap to a certain planet real quick because things are going weird. But then... Uh... I don't know what the name of the ship is. It's called the Aluminum Falcon shows up with the, with the cat on board. A little message from uh, Dime Store Idris Elba about how, hey, you found another black box from, you know, think, which of course, you know, what is Starship, you know, re recorded about the size of this. <laughs> and actually, I'm not going to quip about that because the term black box is a misnomer to begin with. One, they're not black. <laughs> they're actually bright orange. They're actually bright orange and kind of, you know, covered in an orange spongy thing in a framework. But. So the other question of why don't you why don't they just build the entire plane out of that because the entire plane wouldn't fly <laughs> it'd be a nerf plane but that's another issue right. but he's at some kind of salvage yard somewhere and you know if I'm not, not back you know and he'll send the ship ahead with the cat well Mikey Spock decides this is a chance to come to the rescue and get that black box because apparently there was a slight time difference in the Two or three she's gotten so far between when the ships blew up. So, hey, if we, we can do this, we can triangulate. Okay, all right, maybe. However, Saru gives a direct order. No, because we had to stick around. So get the, you know, get the crew and the ship ready to take the jump to this planet if we if we're ordered to. Because it could happen any moment now. And, you know, what, you know she agrees, she walks out, and goes straight to Philippa to, you know, plan a little, you know, mutiny, basically, you know, a little unsanctioned mission, as they called it, you know, like Philippa says, you had me at unsanctioned mission. Now, if she was half as devious, you know, as Michael thought, I think she is, you know, half as smart as she was, she would have, you know, arrange something here um, and basically what it and had the same thing happening yeah the ship would be ready but she's gonna go on a little you know side tour to see if we can get something going here and just get that part cleared okay and Saru would be a little imagined too and say okay yeah as long as the ship's ready and if you're back in time great if not we'll see you when we get back that would have been a great thing but no it's, he's stuck on the old thing of, no everyone's gotta be safe here you're a direct order saying you know whatever Either way, Michael disobeyed direct orders again. And everyone notes that she's doing this again. So, uh, sh short leapfrog to the end there. Yes, yeah, she's relieved of, of her duties as first officer. She's just a science officer. Frankly, Tilly made for a better first officer in this one. Because she was the one actually coordinating people and getting ready. So that's what a first officer does. <laughs> The captain does the orders. The first officer makes sure they're carried out. <laughs> he's the one who, hey, you over here. You know, he's, the, he's the micromanager. You know, the captain's just the, in charge of the overall mission. But back to the thing. You know, Philip and Mikey are going off to, you know, this salvage place. The planet is just surrounded by wreckage, apparently. And they, they're using slave labor thing. And here's where we get into... Uh, our first really big rip-off of the episode where they clearly have ripped off the running man and how they you know, have a little security thing and a little thing on the back of the neck here, which at first, Dimes or Edger Elba does not have. But later he does. So somebody screwed up in continuity department there. Speaking of continuity and the other lack thereof, the one little short trek they did with the... Uh, where it's just the Discovery... And the one guy and the inter in the relationship with the ship's computer, the little Fred Astaire stuff. The ship was just as we saw it. No A, no nothing. But now suddenly, 
It's now 1031A. You don't do that if it's the same damn ship. And the nacelles are no longer attached to the hull. They're sort of hanging there by some force. You have an idea, Alex, how many vulnerabilities you just introduced with that one move? If an enemy has some way to jam whatever field it is that's keeping those nacelles, guess what? You no longer have a starship. You have a big floating hull with no warp capability whatsoever. And trying to maneuver in the spore drive is kind of problematic, you know? So, yeah, they're, they're creating problems where none were before. There's no reason for this. I'm not even sure it needs even to look cool. Cause what? Because it's futuristic? You know, they, you know. And, of course, now they all got the little gooey whatever, you know, pin screens on their, on their consoles now. And, and uh, the... the Badges are now a combination communicator, tricorder, transporter. <sighs> They're now the Starfleet Swiss Army Knife. And Adira is still talking to her dead boyfriend. But instead of trying to think of the, actually doing some kind of actual explanation for this, it's just, you know, no, she's that ingrained or anything. You're going to voice these thoughts, and it's going to be in the form of your boyfriend saying, Oh, it's some sort of sentimentality. You're still carrying his soul with him. Oh, please. Okay. And again, what was the point of the hiring the non-binary and trans actors if you're going to clearly identify them as male and female? And uh, the housekeeper's outside hitting the wall with a vacuum. All right. Uh, I'm also kind of curious because they... They're, they 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 do show a Bajoran or two in there, and the, the in them version, the nose bridge, you know, the ridges don't quite come up to the bridge of the nose. They're kind of like right there. They should be going further up. So that's their difference. But wh why why is uh, Gray wearing kind of, what appears to be a Bajoran earring on the one ear? It's just a style thing. Where minor problem, but. Well, they they look like they're borrowing a little bit from you know from the Bajora thing, but that's just because it's oval. <sighs> oh, and they finally got rid of the things out of you know Stamets' arms now, having to stick his hands in goo, and work the spore drive from there. But uh, you got a lot of schmaltz throw it on this one too, and it's like in really inappropriate situations too, like they get around behind the stacks. You think they're still not monitoring your ass? No, no, you keep it cool until your back is safe on board some of the ships. Then you can go nuts. But also the big demand. Here's a clue to the directors and writers. Whispering does not make the dialogue any better. It doesn't make it any more dramatic. It just means you're afraid to say it out loud. And the whole thing about, you're really the, Saru, you're doing the right thing. Bullshit, he knows that already. That's why he's doing it. You should have been a lot back and starved it in the first place, you dumbass. You know? I mean, uh, again, I contrast this with uh, Beck and Mariner on, on, la on uh, Lower Decks. She disobeys rules that are kind of stupid and get in the way, but she doesn't risk any lives, you know. Hers is just, you know, really paperwork problems. Really. Michael Burnham caused the loss of billions by starting that damn war. Including uh, her own captain and the loss of her ship. That alone should have been should have made sure she never saw the open sky again. Never mind the the, the inside of a starship. But no, we gotta have our, our, our Mary Sue rise to the occasion. But I'm sure there'll be a little bit, you know, where some, you know, who, who replaces her as first officer. Like I said, Tilly would make a better first officer. And showed herself doing doing a better job at it than uh, Michael did. But rest assured that she'll be back in that position within a couple weeks. Because we can't do without Michael Burnham in the top spot now, can we? You know. 
Yeah, another case of they don't know really what they're doing. They think, like, hey, it's called the, uh, oh, it's the Discovery A. Why? It's the same damn ship. You don't change the registries on the same damn ship. That's why it's a registry. It's right to that ship. Just stupid. You know, and, and then go, and some of the things, so it looks more future. Yeah, the see, the nacelles aren't even attached. Yeah, guess what? We jam that signal, there go your nacelles. Spiling off in different directions at warp nine. Dumb. Dumb, 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 dumb. And apparently next week is going to be a little loud thing for my kid is a big inspirational speech to the Falcon. This week be the, this is what the Federation's all about. This series can't get canceled fast enough, frankly, in my opinion. Okay, the fact that you know, like I said, the only hope I have about them being renewed for season four is that they're stretching out what they have in the tank already. Like they're gonna cut off at some point, or they stretch a couple of these things into two parters so they can fill out their episode quota, but there's still a few, few left in the can to wrap it all out. But the whole thing, yeah, we had four seasons, yeah, and episode wise, you don't even have the same number as um, a season and a half of uh, the original series. <laughs> original series was 20 the first season 20 episodes second was like I think uh, 27 or 26 and you're not even going to get close to that number guy with four seasons and and now all the holographing it's more ways to spend more CBS's money you want to know why this series co- it, there's no reason for this show to cost this damn much money There is just needless, okay? I, I don't, you know, some of these inner, I don't see the future looking quite like this anyway, with all the gooey the things. Like, you know, if anything, it should get simpler looking, you know? They're going nuts. Anyway. <sighs> the Batan Death March that, th- that this, this show continues, so we'll look at it next week. PayPal, Patreon, yada yada down below, and we'll catch you later.